Hey again, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed that clip that I made for you, what it's like to be around a narcopath, the effect that they have on those around them. Um, I hope it got the point across. I think that it did, and I'm probably going to be making more of those in the future. Today, I have something that is extra special for you. There are some conversations that I had with a narcopath that I'm going to share with you. And I thought a really, really long time before doing this. I mean, a long time. I made this months ago, actually. The first person that I'll be talking to, or at least the only one that I am talking to in this, uh, is deceased. She's no longer with us. Uh, she's definitely a narcopath, and you can see the... Um, you can see the gaslighting, you can see the lies, twisting, manipulation, and contradicting contradicting herself from sentence to sentence. It's like I said, it's a it's a rarity to have something like this. You don't really know when the narcopath is gonna strike, so you don't really know when to hit the record button. So I started hitting it at the end when I started figuring things out. There are some things that I want to mention uh, before I before I get into this and the, the other narcopath that I'm speaking about in the video is that I, I'm like you learning how this thing goes. We don't really know exactly how the narcissist behaves. So you'll hear me talk about how I, I actually told her that I was going to go no contact with her. And that was a, that was a mistake. You should probably not tell them when you're going to do that. So, you know, I was learning at the time too. And so, you know, cut me, be flexible with me on that. I didn't know exactly what was happening at the time. And I also didn't know that she was one of the narcopaths. It just didn't, when you're in that kind of abuse for so long, for decades and decades, and then you get involved with another narcopath for decades and decades, you may not be thinking correctly at the time. The second one is someone that I was in a legal, uh, a legal issue with in court, and those orders have since expired. So it is uh, all right to acceptable to share that. Now, I'm going to take this a little bit further with that one. I, um, I'm i not going to reveal anyone's identity, and I did change her name on the uh, internet pages that she put out for the public to see. So these were very public. I have other things that I could share, but I have learned that uh, private email or text conversations are off limits. But this, however, was put out for everyone to see. And we're going to look through the way she uses language to manipulate those around her and how, or actually how they misuse language. So the first part is actually kind of a standard, what is a narcissist? The second is this person that people normally term mother. And the third part is the narcopath that I was in some legal issues with. So with all that being said, I think that you're going to find some value in this. Very rare stuff. This is kind of, not kind of, this is why I tell you to keep an eye on the narcopath if you have to. Remember, if you can go no contact, we've already established that you, you go no contact. But if you can't, in this situation, uh, I had children with one of these monsters and it's very difficult to get, go complete no contact if you're in that situation. So you have to you have to really plan and and you have to uh, be strategic in the way you handle things. I think that's the best way to put that. So, with that being said, here we go. Let's take a look at this and see what we can see. All right, all right here we go.
What is narcissism, or NPD, commonly known as narcissistic personality disorder? There are several core features that we will discuss. Perhaps the first and foremost is grandiosity. They feel superior to others and that they deserve special treatment. The special treatment is often accompanied by fantasies of unlimited success, brilliance, power, beauty, or love. The narcissist also has an excessive need for admiration. They must be the center of attention. They must monopolize the relationship, even by stealth. They are superficial and exploitive in their relationships. The narcissist lacks empathy. They are severely limited or totally lacking the ability to care about the emotional needs or experience of others, even loved ones. They have an identity disturbance. Sense of self is highly superficial, extremely rigid, and often fragile. Self-stability depends on maintaining the view that one is exceptional. Grandiose sense of self is easily threatened. The narcissist has difficulty with attachment and dependency. They rely on feedback from the environment. Relationships only exist to shore up the positive self-image. The narcissist also has chronic feelings of emptiness and boredom. When attention and praise are not available, they feel empty, bored, depressed, or restless. And last but not least, the narcissist envies others and believes that others are envious of him or her. So, let's get started. Because I've got you. Yeah, tell me about it. So, when you step around my boundaries and you do things like that, how do you think that makes me feel? Well, I would think that would not make you feel good. But you do it anyway? But you had cut off communication. And why did I me. cut off communication? Because you had been doing abusive things. See. You I know what? See. The kids actually need to see how you people act. Don't, don't, don't do the you kid thing. You do you things. Me from seeing my no one's keeping you from seeing anyone. How can I see him then? Then you need to actually behave, not be abusive and manipulative. How about that? Uh, huh? Don't want to do anything that you think is that way. Really? Well, I asked you not to and you did anyway. Why? Again, you had told me you are not going to communicate with me anymore. And why? Because you'd done abusive, manipulative things before. No, Linda, you violated the boundaries. And you know what? We're gonna leave, okay? I mean, if you, you you need to you need to you need to take a minute before you do these things, and you need to figure out where your loyalty lies and figure out if it actually lies with your children or if you're just gonna do what you wanna do. Okay? My loyalty is with my children. Really? But you do these abusive things anyway. Manipulate. You do what you want to do anyway. You think that they are. I yeah? Don't think really? They when you way. cohort with the people? Well, they wanted yeah. to see my child, my grandchildren. Yeah? That's all. That's you want to see it under your circumstances, not under the people that lay out rules for you. Because some people have boundaries, and you can't always cross those boundaries. You understand? But you do it anyway. Right? But you do it anyway. I don't do anything that I think is against God's will. Okay, God's will. Oh, exactly. Okay, keep going. This is getting interesting. Cody, tell me about school. She's going to change the subject now. Hard questions? Well, it was like I don't really know how to answer. But I know the other parent is so much a relationship. Mm -hmm. Oh, fixed up. I have packed in. I thought it was asking me how often I talk to her. Or not you could it. answer that if you want. Oh boy, I don't know what kind of no, things I'd like to say here. Describe the strengths and weaknesses. As a parent, hmm. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to, what it's really asking. You provide a nice home. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Please. You're one answering, not me. Mm -hmm. You're answering, not me. You've known me a long time.
ไว้สอง <coughs> Do I have any concerns about evil parent in the areas of emotional stability, <coughs> drug and alcohol, violent behavior, other problems? <sighs> you know, I'm. I really don't. Okay. I just don't know. You don't have any. You don't have any. Is that all you want to say on here? Well, I don't, unless you really should think I should expound on something in particular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm just confused. I mean, I'm happy to do that, but mm -hmm. I just think that confused? you'd have more, uh, that it would carry more weight if there was somebody that wasn't or not. But I've got other people that can do it. Would you rather me have someone else? Because no. they require three, and we Want to ask if you wanted to. You've got two of the others or not. I've mentioned uh, Of course they're not. Yeah, that's fine. But if you, do you not, because if you don't want to do it, we don't have to send this. I can drag or bob or well, troll. Really so, that's it? I guess so. Okay. I mean, my only thought is that if, if I were a former counselor mm -hmm. and I saw What's your relationship, Eric? I'd probably <laughs> step on in the white mask. Because what else would they expect me to do? Yeah, what else would they expect you to do? Here is a mother who can't find one positive thing to say about her son's parenting skills. Not one. Rest assured this has nothing to do with parenting skills nor lack of character on the victim's part and everything to do with the narcissist appearing to help while actually sabotaging the victim's efforts. During this time and prior, she had been asked to not have discussions or dialogue with the other parent. But as you will see, boundaries mean nothing to the narcissist. Make sure. I don't know. Do you need to talk to her about it or anything? What would I talk to her about? I don't know. I haven't spoken to her since I... So you need to talk to their mom for anything? I haven't talked to her. Okay. I was trying to remember. So do you need to talk to her for anything? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think so. You sure? Well, what would, I don't understand what you're even asking. Do you need to talk to her about this or anything? Well, why would I talk to her? Why don't you? I don't understand. <laughs> nope, I'm on your side. I've always been on your side. And I thought, why would she need my address? She's got it. Looks like there's a lot in here.
boy mom. What? A lot of communication in there. <coughs> hmm? Well, I've been in truthfully. Sure. I don't know. Do you need to talk to her about it or anything? What would I talk to her about? I don't know. I haven't spoken to her since I... And there you have it. As plain as the look on her face, the treachery of the narcissist. During the time that I was recording these, I wasn't sure who a narcissist was or who a flying monkey was, but I have news for you. They are all abusers. They are all narcissists. This is why it can be so difficult to extract yourself from these situations. You must be vigilant in uncovering the truth to do so. Unfortunately, at this time, I have been no contact with several other narcs so I was unable to get video documentation of their behavior. But rest assured, their behavior is just as treacherous as what you see here. I want to reiterate, if you can go no contact, do. Go no contact and do not look back. However, there might be extenuating circumstances that you are unable to do so, and this was one of those times for me. Just as a side note, the court case was decided favorably. And for that, I am truly grateful. None of the treacherous behavior of the narcs or the ego paths was successful. None of it. Well, what have we here? It seems that Karen has put up a GoFundMe page to raise money for her side of the court case. She says here that she is concerned with the truth, and I quote, Narcopath, Karen, says, Even though it did not turn out as I had hoped, I know the truth will come out eventually, unquote. Well, Karen, you got your wish. The truth is coming out eventually, and eventually is now. By now, we should all know that a narcopath is not concerned with truth. However, with simple, deductive reasoning, we can see what the narcopath is all about. Let's proceed, shall we? In this next, available to the public screenshot, you can see that Karen has put up the title of Justice for her GoFundMe page. It's a little hard to see, but if you look up, to the top and to the left you can see it's justice for Karen and not justice for the child in question. It seems to me if it was a custody case that justice should be for the child not the parent. Am I right? I think I'm right. Let's take a look at another page of justice for Karen you can see that down the page, Karen consistently refers to the child in question as her son, and not that the child has two parents. This is a self-centered, narcopath's red flag. As last time I checked, children had two parents, but not according to this narcopath, Karen. Also note, about halfway down the page, she accuses the other parent of parental alienation. However, how could the other parent be guilty of parental alienation if the child doesn't live with them? It seems that this narcopath uses verbiage and buzzwords, but not facts. Now let's take a look to the right to one of her contributors. It seems that this contributor has stated that you are doing the right thing and the world is watching. And then if you look down just a little ways, you see that there are 14 donations. I guess there are only 14 people in the world. 
The arrogance of the narcissist and their flying monkeys is astounding. And finally, we come to the deactivation page for Justice for Karen. What I want you to notice is the dollar amount, $825. It doesn't seem that the narcopath is as omnipresent as they think they are, nor is the world watching. Only a pathetic handful of individuals who believe the nonsense that the narc is feeding them. So there you have it in a nutshell. I finally figured out what the narcopath was doing to me. Now narcopath, it's time for you to figure out what I did to you. Good luck. Goodbye to your soul In your arsenal awesome